everyone welcome to smart math online tutor through this video i'm going to tell you about decimals and the first section i'm going to discuss is how to convert decimals to fractions now you should remember when we convert a decimal to a fraction you must pay attention to the number of decimal places in the decimal number and at the same time you should remember the denominator of the fraction must be a power of 10. Let me explain further with the help of an example. The first example I'm going to take is 0 0.5. Now here you can see 5 is after a decimal point and this number has only one decimal place therefore in our power of 10 the number of zeros must be only one then it becomes 10 and the numerator becomes 5 therefore our answer is 5 over 10 moving on to another example that is 2.25 here there are two decimal places so the power of 10 should have two zeros therefore it must be 100 and the numerator must be 225 fine now let's look into converting fractions to a decimal in this case as well we have to consider about the denominator of the fraction the first example i have taken is 52 over 1000 now the denominator has three zeros therefore remember in our answer there must be three decimal places that is there must be three digits after the decimal point so since 52 has only two digits i put those two digits at the end and the rest i fill with zeros therefore our answer becomes 0.052 the next example i'm going to take is 2 over 5 now look here it doesn't have a power of 10 as the denominator so what we should do is to convert 5 to a power of 10 for that i multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2 then i get 4 over 10 like this now our denominator is a power of 10 it has only one zero so it should have only one decimal place in the answer it becomes 0 0.4 then fine now let's pay our attention in multiplication and division of decimals by powers of 10 the first example i'm going to take here is 0 0.0456 multiplied by 10 remember when multiplying any decimal number by a power of 10 we move the decimal point to the right since 10 has only one zero we move the decimal point only once then our answer becomes 0 0.456 The next example I'm going to take is 0 0.323 multiplied by 100. Now it is clear that 100 has two zeros. So what we should do is to move the decimal point backwards twice like this. So it will give you the answer 32.3. Now let's see how to perform division. Since we went back while multiplication, we should move forward in division. The first example here is 45.6 divided by 1000. Now you can see 1000 has three zeros. So what you should do is to move the decimal point to the left three times like this. Now when you move three times, you don't have digits before 4 so instead of the digits you which you don't have we put zeros then our answer becomes 0 0.0456 let's take a final example i'm taking 325.3 divided by 10 now 10 has only one zero therefore we should move the decimal point once forward or to the left so it will give you the answer 32.53 like this now let's pay our attention to multiplication of decimals by any other number or a decimal number so in this case first of all let us see how to multiply decimals by a whole number except a power of 10 
Now you should remember there are two methods that can be followed in multiplying a decimal by a whole number or a whole number by a decimal. So let me explain the two methods with the aid of some examples. The first example I have taken here is 12.2 multiplied by 7. In the first method what we do is we neglect the decimal points and write the numbers like this. So 12.2 becomes 122 when the decimal point is neglected that I multiply by 7 by using normal methods of multiplication. It will give you 854 as the answer. Now this is not our final answer. We can see in the sum there is one digit after the decimal place. So remember in your answer also you should have one digit after the decimal place. So I keep my decimal point before 4 giving the answer 85.4. Moving on to the second method of simplifying this sum. What we do here is we write the decimal as a fraction. We know 12.2 is 122 over 10 once when it is written as a fraction. That we multiply by 7 then you get the answer as 854 over 10. We know when the denominator has one zero the answer must have one decimal place after the decimal point. So it gives us 85.4 as the final answer. Moving on to another example, 8.87 multiplied by 5. According to our first method, what we do is we neglect the decimal point and do the normal multiplication. So once when the decimal point in 8.87 is neglected, it becomes 887 multiplied by 5. So the answer becomes 4435 once multiplied. So this is not the final answer yet to be decided regarding the decimal point. So what we do is go into the sum again. You can see there are two digits after the decimal point. So in the answer you have to have two digits after the decimal point. So I place the decimal point like this. It becomes 44.35. When you move on to the second method of simplification, what you should do is you write this decimal number as a fraction. Since it has two decimal places, the denominator will be 100. So 887 divided by 100 multiplied by 5 will give you 4435 divided by 100. Since 100 has two zeros, we know the answer must have two decimal places. So it gives you 44.35 as the final answer. So you can follow any of these two methods to simplify multiplication of a whole number by a decimal or a decimal by a whole number. Now let's move on to multiplication of decimal numbers by a decimal number. Here too you can follow two methods. Let's look into that with examples. The first example I'm going to give you is 2.7 into 0 0.9. Just like before in our first method, what we do is we neglect the decimal points and follow normal multiplication. Now here it becomes 27 into 9. Once when you multiply 27 by 9, you get 243. Now that is not the final answer. Go back to the sum. You can see there are two digits in the sum after the decimal point. 7 and 9 are after decimal points. Therefore, in our answer, you should have two digits after the decimal point. So, it gives us 2.43. When you follow the second method of simplification, it will be like you have to write the two decimal numbers as fractions 2.7 is 27 over 10 and 0 0.9 is 9 over 10 when you multiply the fractions 27 into 9 is 243 and 10 into 10 is 100 now you know in this case since the denominator is 100 the answer must have two decimal places so the answer becomes 2.43 Let's look into another example. 6.2 multiplied by 0 0.03. Let's do in the first method. Then what you should do is forget about the decimal points. Then it becomes 62 into 3. And the answer becomes 186. 
Now let's look into the number of decimal places. Here you have two decimal places and here you have one decimal place altogether three decimal places. So here the answer must have three decimal places in it. So it's, it is 0 0.186. When you follow the second method, what you should do is you have to write these digits or the numbers as fractions. 6.2 will be 62 over 10 and 0 0.03 will be 3 over 100. Once when multiplied, you will get 186. 10 into 100 is 1000. So 1000 has three zeros. So the answer must have three decimal places. Then it becomes 0 0.186. So whatever the method you follow, you get the same answer. All what you have to do is to follow the easy method. You feel easy or you feel better or you feel confident. The next part we are going to look into is division of decimal numbers. Now here too we have two methods to divide numbers with a decimal or decimal by a whole number. So let's see how to do that. The first example I'm going to give you is 63 divided by 1.2. Now what we do here is in our first method, we write uh, 1.2 as a fraction. So it becomes 63 divided by 1.2 is 12 over 10. Right. We have learned already how to divide fractions so we have to take it as 63 division we write as multiplication and the fraction we write the reciprocal of it like this and you have to multiply then you will get 630 divided by 12 once when you divide 630 by 12 the answer will be 52.5 so this is the first method you can follow in division the second method is you write 63 by 1.2 like this as a fraction. Now we have to cancel the decimal in the denominator. In order to cancel that what you should do is to multiply it by 10. I multiply by 10 because 1.2 has only one decimal number. If it had two decimals then you have to multiply it by 100. If it had three you have to multiply it by 1000 and so on. So 63 into 10 is 630. 1.2 into 10 is remember the decimal point goes back once so it becomes 12. Our purpose of multiplying by 10 is to Get rid of the decimal number in the denominator, remember. So here again, we are getting the same answer, 52.5. Let's move into another simple example. 165 divided by 0 0.11. According to the first method, we can write 165 divided by 0 0.11 has two decimal places so our denominator must be 100 and the numerator is 11 and now let's perform the division 165 division turns to multiplication and then the reciprocal of the fraction will be 100 over 11 once when multiplied you can see 165 can be cancelled by 11 165 has 15 elevens, so the final answer becomes 15 into 100 and that is 1500 in our next method, what we do is we write 165 divided by 0 0.11 in this format. Now 0 0.11 has two decimal places. To get rid of two decimal places, you should multiply it by 100. So I multiply both up and down by 100 like this. And it will give you 16,500 over 11. We get 11 because when multiplied by 100, the decimal point moves back twice. Now we know the answer is 1500 again. Hope I made myself clear with the multiplication and division of decimal numbers. See you with another smart method. Until then, goodbye.